Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all those of you who are watching at home. We're glad you're joining us this morning. My name is Michelle McGrath, and I'm a member of the Trinity United Church Congregation, and I'm part of the worship team that is filling in doing our uh, worship ministry in the interim until we hire our new minister. Now, I hear that Someone has an announcement? Rita, about the auction? Okay, thank you, Rita. Good morning, everyone, here and at home. Um, I know you're all eager to find out how we we did yesterday and I'm going to tell you but first of all you have to sit through everything else anyway <laughs> I want to build the suspense um, turn 8 day did really well you guys take direction when I said bid often and bid well you did uh, and that's great that's really really great for our uh, support of our refugee family and I don't think Doug knew just how valuable nor how popular his buns are <laughs> yeah, thank you, Doug. <laughs> A few other thank yous um, to our youth helpers, Addie and Brandon. Um, they were great. And our teen helper, Joey. I think he might be thinking about a different line of work. Maybe as he gets older, he did really, really well. And by the end of the auction, I think he could have taken over from my role. Um, and to the rest of the committee, I give my heartfelt thanks. That's Marge and Cliff Martin, um, Janet and Queen, Norm and Tina, and oh, I know who they're on the committee. Harvey, my co-chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm afraid I get really emotional because this was a huge step for me. And I thank you all for being so supportive of me as an individual and the committee in the work that we did and the work that they did as well. And last but not least, I need to thank Jim Griffin for his amazing auctioneering. Amazing. <laughs> There's also another group that needs to be thanked. The ones who worked in the kitchen. That's the Soul Sisters who did the coffee and muffins and the UCW who did the lunch. And the reason they need to be thanked is they donated all of their proceeds back to the auction. And that was amazing, thank you. And their proceeds were $343.80. Now, can I think of anything else to say? Oh. Well, maybe the bottom line. Bottom line, what we realized from the bidding was $5,409 combined with the proceeds from the kitchen, $5,747.80. Well done, Trinity. And thank you all again. Okay. To Rita and the committee, that's wonderful news. 
and a great boost for the, uh, the refugee families' expenses. We will start our service this morning with our land acknowledgement. For thousands of years, Indigenous people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. As we come in to worship this morning, we recognize that Trinity United Church is located on the Nash traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Attawandarok peoples who have cared for this land since time immemorial. The community of Ingersoll is represented by both the Between the Lakes Treaty of 1792 and the London Township Treaty of 1796. As we gather, we are mindful of the broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work towards justice and reconciliation. with me in our responsive call to worship. We gather this morning as the church. We bring our joys and our triumphs. We bring our disappointments and sorrows. We bring our enthusiasm and zeal. We bring our doubts and our questions. We offer them to God. Who was, who is, and who always will be our God. And we will read together our opening prayer. On this day, we gather to pray for your peace, not the peace that comes from the barrel of a gun, but the peace that comes from an open heart. The peace that is created through the sharing of all of the gifts of your creation, so no one will live in want. The peace revealed when we welcome the stranger and greet them as a friend, rather than seeing them as someone to be feared. The peace created when all the voices of your children are heard instead of ignoring those who only want what is just. It is the peace that lies at the heart of your vision for our world. Amen. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to do it with the children this morning, if that's okay. Thank you.
privilege today to read those of the names who gave the ultimate price to give us our real freedom. World War I, 1914 to 1918. Gordon Klein, Victor Couch, Thomas Edwards, Ewart Hollingshead, Jack Johnson, Douglas Lucas, Frank Mortimer, George Newbern, Frederick Robinson, Roy Russell, Stephen Scott, John Shillington, Quincy Sutherland, Vern Taylor, George Webster, Charles White. World War II, 1939 to 1945. Robert Bruce Douglas, Donald E. Jemby, William V. Walker, Arthur R. George, Gordon A. Chamberlain, Reginald Butler, Bruce Winders, Byron Haley, Kenneth Campbell, Jack H. M. Kerr, Arthur Horning, Clifford E. Bennett. And from the Korean conflict, 1950 to 1953, Robert Walker. <laughs> They shall not grow old as we that are left shall grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we shall remember them. Eternal rest grant upon them, O God, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls, through your mercy, rest in peace. Amen. <laughs> 
much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to for a scripture reading. Usually I'm loud enough. <laughs> Today, the Lord told Joshua, I will give you great honor so that all Israel will know that I am with you, just as I am with Moses. Instruct the priests who are carrying the ark to stop at the edge of the river. Then Joshua summoned all the people and told them, come and listen to what the Lord your God has said. Today you are going to know for sure that the living God is among you and that he will, without fail, drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergahites, Amorites, and Jebusites, all the people who now live in the land you will soon occupy. Think of it, the Ark of God, who is Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the river. Now select 12 men, one from each tribe, for a special task. When the priests who are carrying the ark touch the water with their feet, the river will stop flowing as though held back by a dam and will pile up as though against the invisible wall. Now it was the harvest season and the Jordan was overflowing all its banks, but as the people set out to cross the river and as the feet of the priests who were carrying, as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark 
touched the water at the river's edge. Suddenly, far up the river at the city of Adam, near Zarethan, the water began piling up as though against a dam. And the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was empty. Then all the people crossed at a spot where the river was close to the city of Jericho, and the priests who were carrying the ark stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan and waited as all the people passed by. Well, my children have all left. <laughs> so um, we'll light the Christ candle and I'll do the story I was going to do another week. So We light our Christ candle each service um, as a reminder that God is with us. Wherever two or three of us have gathered in his name, he is present. So this morning, we've been obviously remembering those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and um, celebrating Remembrance Day. Um, it's more difficult to do a special service, I'm finding out, because there's elements that we don't normally incorporate into our service that are kind of throwing me for a loop. So my apologies that things are a bit out of order this morning. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? For some who lost loved ones in the wars of the 20th century, it will have very special per personal memories. But for most of us, it's a very necessary reminder of suffering and sacrifice by ordinary men and women in the interests of their nation and its values. I have a picture here this morning. This is my mom's father, so Louise Baird's father. He is my grandfather and his name is Maitland Ryan. He was serving during World War I and this picture of him was taken in 1916 when he was 20 years old. It is actually in fact the youngest picture I have ever seen of my grandfather. He served in the Forestry Corps in uh, the region of Bordeaux, France. Obviously, he was not killed, or I wouldn't be here with you this morning. In World War II, all of my father's four brothers and his only sister served in various divisions. He was the youngest, so he was the one who stayed home to help run the dairy farm. All of them returned home when the war was over. Today we, we especially remember the brave young people from Ingersoll who did not survive, the ones who gave their lives so that we could have the freedoms that we now enjoy. We commemorate this event every year. Perhaps we should pause to ask the question, why? The trouble is that we humans forget really quickly. That's why even small communities have a cenotaph. I looked up the word cenotaph. It comes from the Greek words kenos and taphos, meaning empty tomb. And it is a monument to someone who is buried elsewhere, especially commemorating people who died in a war. That's why we wear our poppies as a reminder so that each generation of men and women do not forget what was done on their behalf. These memorials are there to help us to remember. They are there as visual aids to remind us of how we have been delivered from tyranny, lest we forget. The Israelites had the same problem of forgetfulness. They too had passed through a great liberation experience. 
The story is well known. They had been enslaved in Egypt and were enduring harsh treatment as forced labor, probably building the now famous pyramids. Jehovah, the God of their forefathers, heard their cries of misery and desperation. At all costs, the people of Israel were to remember what they were. They were slaves. God had done something wonderful for them. He had liberated them. But it wasn't something that they had accomplished by their own efforts. They were entirely dependent on someone else's intervention on their behalf. They were indebted to God, if only they would acknowledge it for what he had done. Some of us are old enough to remember wartime experiences. People of many countries occupied by hostile forces have been reduced to slavery, compelled to work under grim conditions. Others who were more fortunate were not slaves but were captives in their own countries enduring a imprisonment under armed guard. Others served in the forces and were captured as prisoners. It still happens in our world today. We do well to remember them. Moses was chosen by the Lord to lead the people out of Egypt in a great national deliverance that we know as the Exodus. But do you know incredible as it seems, they were so caught up with the minor difficulties of the journey that they soon forgot that red letter day of their deliverance from their enemy by the hand of Jehovah. They forgot that they had an obligation to God who had so miraculously saved them from a life of slavery. But because they were imperfectly human, they were ungrateful. You remember how God had given Moses that moral code we know as the Ten Commandments. In the years that followed, he often repeated them in stirring addresses to the people. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. This call to remember, and that's why Remembrance Day is so important. It's kept year after year so that we have the opportunity to reflect on its significance. In our Bible reading this morning, we heard that Joshua, now the leader of the Israelites since Moses' death, is bringing them to the promised land. This is the reward God has promised them. God made a covenant to Abraham to give him land from which his family would live, work, and eventually rule. But there were already people living there, the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. Where were they supposed to go? I have to say that history was never a good subject for me in school, especially military history. But in preparing for today, I got looking up the traditional lands of all of these people because I was curious what God was promising to them. And you can do the same. You can Google where were the, you know, Ammonites and Amorites and it, you'll find it. The problem is that promised land by itself, just geographically, is really an unimportant piece of land. In many respects, no one piece of land is worth the bloodshed and violence that region of the world has faced. From 1406 BC to 1000 BC, the Israelites battled with the people already on the lands, and this created a sort of domino effect. As one group was defeated, they moved back onto the lands of their neighbors. And then those groups retreated farther back again, all the while pushing other people off of their lands. And so on and so on, like that shampoo commercial. Before the Israeli state was declared in 1948, 
This region held both Jewish provinces and Palestinian provinces. The problem is still being fought over today because at various times this land has been promised to both groups and it was promised to them that they would be the only one there not sharing it with anyone else. And leaders on both sides have made it their political agenda to try and get rid of the others. Both groups have historical buildings that are central to their religious history and practices in this region. And they even share one site in particular, the Dome of the Rock, that is central to both Jewish and Islamic religion. It sits on the Temple Mount, which is acknowledged as the location where the first Jewish temple was. The rock inside is said to be the rock upon which Abraham was told to sacrifice his son Isaac. This region is also significant to Christians because this is where Christ was born, grew up, and fulfilled his ministry. In war, there are no winners and losers. There are only losers. Moms and dads will lose sons and daughters. Children will lose their parents. Siblings will lose each other. Wives will lose their husbands, and husbands will lose their wives. Families lose homes, hopes, and dreams. That is what is happening for both the Israelis and the Palestinians. Both are losing. Maybe we cannot make peace between those enemies, or between Russia and the Ukraine, or between any other opposing groups who are currently fighting in this world. But perhaps we can make peace in our individual and personal conflicts. And I do believe that if I am a person of peace, perhaps the people around me will catch peacefulness like a beautiful infection and become persons of peace themselves and maybe it'll spread wider and wider. I also believe that if the church is not a place where peace is practiced and promoted, the church has lost its way. So how do you and I practice peace on a personal level? First, we can try to make it a practice to never do something with the intent to hurt. No matter what the provocation, not to a person's face or behind their back, and that includes gossip. And because we are human and sometimes we do act or speak with intent to hurt, we then must apologize to the person and ask forgiveness from God. Secondly, we must learn to tame our own reaction to others. The golden rule is useful here. Treat others as you want them to treat you. Suppose someone makes me angry. If it had been the other way around, if I had made them angry, would have I have wanted them to yell, you idiot, at me? Or would I have liked it if they had started to gossip to others about how annoying I was? No, I would have hoped for a calm word in private saying something like, I got upset when you did that. Jesus says that when someone offends you, pray for them. Call down God's blessing upon those people. Jesus prays for those who persecute him. It's hard to ask God to bless a person unless you yourself wish good things for them. We can pray for those who are suffering in wars currently. We don't have to pick a side. Like I said, there are no winners. We can simply pray that all those involved will be granted peace and that their suffering and loss may end. We as Christians are first and foremost a people of peace. If we caught up in the evil 
of war, the Christian must choose the side which has the least evil and then must act with courage. The best of these people are held in our hearts and minds on Remembrance Day. Those who gave their lives for the benefit of others, who struggled to uphold the greater good and resist the greater evil. But our calling is to be people of peace, turning the other cheek, loving our neighbor as ourselves, and loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. before we have our offering, I would like to acknowledge the authors of the prayers that we have used this morning. Um, Francis Fluck from Emo, Ontario. Sandy Ferguson from Edmonton, Alberta. David Lander when he was serving in Toronto. And Bill Stedman from Toronto as well. And Elizabeth Goodson from Prairie Vision Pastoral Charge, Manitoba. I like the name of that pastoral charge. So we thank them for their work. People who have a lot of money and no time are called rich. People who have a lot of time and no money are called poor. Yet the most precious gifts of love, the gifts of friendship and compassion, grow only in the sweet soil of unproductive or downtime. 
we give our offering of both to you now, God. give our gifts to the work of your church for the encouragement of your people and with the love of Christ in our hearts. Bless our offerings and our service, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're good at doing peace here in Trinity. <laughs> Now's the time that we will pass peace to each other and greet each other this morning. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Go now and pass the peace.
interesting to me how when something is different that I haven't had up here with me before this headset is an old one the uh, other headset that I'm used to isn't functioning right now and I have a very wide head and this is getting really uncomfortable <laughs> little changes they split your focus and so if I'm don't seem quite as focused today this is part of it so I'm sorry it's like if you learn your lines for a play, always looking at the wall of your living room, and then you get up on stage, your brain goes, wait a minute, something is missing. We don't remember anything without that wall. Brains are complicated things. We'll bow now for the prayers of the people. Divine One, we are called to be your church, but sometimes we forget that it's not a call to maintain a building, not a call to devote all our energies to fundraising, but we are also called to be part of bringing your realm into existence here on earth. Remind us of the great gifts we received from you, the gift of life itself, and your presence with us through all its moments. Remind us of your call to us to celebrate your unfailing presence with us. Remind us that you began the process of creating the universe almost 15 billion years before the first humans appeared and that we are neither the center nor the pinnacle of your creation act. Remind us of your call to us to live with respect in creation. Remind us of those who live in poverty. Remind us of the homeless and those who live in substandard housing, even here in our own town. Remind us of those throughout the world who have lost their homes to flood, mudslide, earthquake, tsunami, and war. Inspire us to generosity as you remind us of your call to us to love and serve others. Remind us that you created all races, all nations, and that your will is that all your children should be accepted and respected. Remind us of your call to us to seek justice and resist evil. And remind us that in answering this call, we need to give up some of our privilege, some of our overabundance. May our lives proclaim that we are followers of the way of Jesus. May we be judged worthy to bear his name. In life, in death, in life beyond death, you are with us. We are not alone. May we feel your presence, hear your call, and respond in faith. Amen.
As we wait for the fighting to cease in our world, we are called to go out and be God's peacemakers, to encourage conversation so that our hurt and brokenness may be manifest in tears of healing release, rather than in angry words and broken bones. Go now. Mm -hmm. 